Hey everybody, so I have something pretty cool in here today. I have the original MacBook Air, and I believe this is the one that Steve Jobs presented um, a long time ago. He was really proud about, uh, I believe this is 2008, so quite a while ago. And the whole, I, the whole principle behind this one is to show that it's a sleek design, right? And it's very thin. A lot of laptops back, if you look at like 2008, 2009, they're really thick, fat laptops. Um, just in general, the whole the idea of design really isn't there. There's more functionality, right? That's kind of the whole point, and there's no sleekness, there's no sexiness, there's nothing to it. This one did kind of change it a bit. Um, I remember those commercials where they used to show it going like inside and outside the envelope. If I find it, I'll definitely show it here. I remember that they were talking about that it was just really cool back in the day of how thin it was, right? That was a whole big thing. So because of uh, how thin it is, the ports are a very strange selection. So if you see, this is the power connector port. That's over here, and you can see it's on the bottom. And you also see the USB connections. Great thing, yeah, look at that, right? That's on the bottom that has a little latch like there. Uh, the real interesting thing about this is that obviously the power jack's on the bottom. So whenever you use it, it's going to, whenever you use it and it goes flat, it's actually gonna knock out or it's just very awkward. We're not in here for the design of it. We're obviously in here for a repair, but that's the thing. This, the repair for this one is mainly just to get the data off, and uh, the customer really isn't too interested in doing a full repair for it because I believe it just needs maybe an operating system or a hard drive. There's a problem with, uh, with that. It does turn on. It does load, but we're not able to access data. We're not able to go to the operating system. Go ahead and take a look at it. All right, because this is a little bit awkward, I'm just going to hold it up in the meantime. Because if I lay it down, sometimes it just knocks out, and I just want to just hold it up. So bear with me a little bit on the screen, but I'll show you guys. It's We're not going to spend a whole lot of time here anyway. I, was, I don't know the design choice. I'm not sure. I'm glad, hey, I'm glad this is old design choice and not new design choice. So we plug it in. This actually does come on, and it's just going to go ahead and sit. I don't see it. You can't see it when you actually look at it, but... On the camera, you can see, <laughs> I see that there's like lines. All right, so we get a folder icon that does come up here. Um, usually it means there's a problem right with the drive or there's no operating system that's being detected. So let's not worry about this. Let's try to actually boot maybe with a external device. Now the only problem is about booting with an external device or external drive here is that this is an older one. I think this came with 10.5? Right, I think I think that's a much much older one. So I have uh, I do have a USB. It's a little bit older. I think it's 10.10, or something like that. Not too sure. So let's go ahead and plug that in and see if it's going to do anything. I don't think it's going to register it, but it should. It's only a few years after, so I I would think it would support something. But most of these are older. They won't support uh, anything else. So I have my USB here. Let's see if we can at least detect it. It's High Sierra. Okay, so I do have High Sierra. I don't think this is going to work anyway, but we'll hit it, and yep, you get the little circle with a line through it. So, all right, so what can we do now? So since we have this interesting thing, right? So let's go ahead and unplug it. All right, so let's go ahead, um, open it up, and obviously unplug it. Unplug this, and I do see we have a very interesting drive here. Now let's take this away because we're not really worried about this anymore. And it's a really interesting one that we have. It's an older drive for the drive out. So what's next? What can we actually do to this? How are we actually going to read data from this drive? So what we want to do is make this into a connection where we can at least read it, right? Because we have other MacBooks we can connect it to. Maybe we can just extract data from there. We also have other data rec recovery tools such as the PC3000, which are going to help extract data from drives like this. Now, the only thing we really need to worry about is how are we going to use this connection? So this connection is very interesting. It has a ribbon cable, and um, the drive itself is actually based on an IDE protocol. And the interface it has here is, it's, obviously it's not a SATA interface or M.2 interface. It's an older one. It's called a ZIF interface. So it's very easy just to do a latch. These are lots of other parts on a laptop um, have ribbon cables. This is very similar to it. It just has a latch, and this little cable pulls off. Now, this is our ZIF interface that we have. Now we would need to connect it somehow either to a MacBook or we need to connect it to another device. How are we gonna actually get the data? What can we do to get the data off? 
Well, we have data recovery tools such as the PC3000 we can connect it to, and we also do have other MacBooks we can connect it to, right? Maybe if we plugged in a way to find a way to connect this, maybe this can go, the ZIF interface can go to a USB or a ZIF interface could go to a SATA connection like a typical hard drive. Maybe we can extract data that way. Um, so we actually so happen to find something here because the only way we can really extract data is to connect it. So I did find this adapter. It's a ZIF to SATA adapter. And we're going to go ahead and see if we can extract the data from it. So this plugs just in just like that. Now, what we can do, because this now has a SATA interface, it's real easy to find something like this we have over here, which is a sled. And what these sleds do are, they're a connector. We can connect this from a, um, you see there's a little SATA connection here. You can slide, slip in a hard drive. Oh, I just so happen to have one right here. I can slip in a regular drive like this. And then we can go ahead, put this in the right way, slides in, and we can go ahead, turn on, and extract data that way. That's a simple data extraction, and there's no uh, recovery really necessary. It's very easy. So we want to go ahead and see, try the easiest one first, right, to see if we can just pull the data, see if we can see the drive. Now, since we weren't able to see anything on the drive and we didn't recognize the drive itself there, um, we're either worried that it's an operating system problem or there's a problem with the hard drive itself. So again, because it, um, it is an IDE drive, it's very old, so most likely there's a problem with it. So it'll be a way to like fold it like that. Now it plugs in. All right, so we have it connected to here. I have it plugged in. Now I need to bring power to this. Let's see if we even get any type of power or see if we get any clicking noise or anything. So I have my power and let's go ahead and press the button. So we see the light, and let's see if we can get anything to go. Well, at least that means power. At least it's not shorting out or anything. So we want to see if we can connect it to maybe like another MacBook or something. I'm going to go ahead, ahead and have the MacBook here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB. So it is blinking. So that means at least it does recognize it. Let me go ahead and show you the error I'm getting when I go to disk utility. It shows that it's there and that it is an 80 gig drive, but it won't be able to mount. So that's really unfortunate. Okay, so we actually have a problem with the drive itself here. So the good news is we are able to see something, right? We are able to detect the drive. So at least it's not making any clicking noises, grinding noises, anything else. So what do we do next, right? A lot of drives like these ones have a serial port. And why is a serial port really important, right? What is this port? And why is it always on every single drive? These are usually for more for manufacturers to access drives to do a lot more than a typical SATA drive here. So well, your computer isn't going to have this drive because it doesn't really need it. But any manufacturer, any type of data recovery tool is going to have something that does access a drive that goes a lot further than, than just pulling from whatever Windows can see and using disk utility and just using having a regular type of power and data uh, port here. So this can, this can do a lot of things. And um, with these ones, uh, you can send commands. You can do a lot more with it in general. So now the interesting one with this one, we notice obviously we don't have that on this one. And you're most likely going to need a native connection that does go on here. The problem is that native padded controllers are not using electronics anymore since about 2011 or a little bit before that. So, so that means a lot of the platforms that are used can't actually send native uh, padded commands to the native padded drives. And usually those are go for capacities, usually from about one gig to about 120 gig. So there's no real way to to actually use um, data recovery tools uh, effectively outside of maybe a data extractor or doing a, a few very uh, simple tests through a SATA connection here. Because the whole point of it is, right, is to kind of use how the manufacturer tool is going to use it is to access it through um, the serial port. So we're going to go ahead and see, we're still going to go ahead and use this connection. We're going to go and stick it in our PC3000 and see if we can at least see something, access the drive and see how much different it's really going to be than typical Windows. All right, so this is the PC3000 interface. And we need to select the right HDD vendor. We can just auto select. It's going to select the exact one that we have here. And this is actually really good. You see how fast it's moving there? That's, that's a really good sign. And that is actually just showing the model number, serial number, capacity. It's uh, able to, to read that, which is a very good thing. Also, it does show um, how many heads are there. And also, and if there's any problems really with the sector, you can see there's some errors in the red. Um, since this is an IDE drive, and like we explained a little bit earlier, it's about this not having this only having really a SATA port and it doesn't have that serial port that would help us send commands to this one. Um, all we can really use is going to be the data extractor. We're going to help hope that's going to actually just work out here. All right, so we do have the extractor here and we actually see part of the root of the drive here. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and do a little disk analysis 
And it would be nice to run all of them, but we already do know what type of format this drive is. We're obviously not going to select the NTFS because that's a Windows drive. So we know this one's a bit older, so it's still going to be on the HFS+. Plus. All right, it's going to do its thing. And we're really fortunate, again, how this is running very smoothly. It is taking a little bit of time. I am kind of skipping through it, but we are able to see the root of the drive, and we're able to see the data and all the little path and the paths through the actual drive itself there. So can't really show this part too much because we'll put a little blur, blur over it because it's also obviously the customer data, but it's there and we can actually see it and then we can just transfer it to an external drive um, as necessary. So this is just the most basic use of, of the data recovery tools that we have here. Um, this one was very fortunate how it didn't need any type of head replacement. It wasn't giving any extra errors. So it was just displaying all the information properly and we were just able to, to use more just of the data extractor tool just to get out the data. Um, this tool is just more advanced than doing any type of Windows or Mac or using any type of utilities through Windows or Mac. And it's just very straightforward. Um, any other type of data recovery, you, you get more errors. You're not going to have any description on the drive ID itself. You have to go uh, analyze more of, of the platters and there's lots of uh, dead sectors that can be on the drive. Like when it's doing a scan, you can see that there's, there's lots of maybe black areas on the drive, which are just dead sectors. There's lots of, other, most likely there's lots of other problems that are going to happen um, for, for most drives. And from there on, a lot of uh, mechanical drives, they do have that serial report where you can send commands and you can do a lot more when it comes to it. Definitely stay tuned, for, definitely go into more data recovery. So definitely subscribe for, for more of that. As, long as, as well as our beloved liquid spill MacBook repairs that we do here as well and other type of motherboard repairs so if you guys are interested please leave a like i hope you guys really did learn something today if you guys are interested please leave a like it really does help us a lot comment down below the drive that's in your macbook i would love to know go ahead and leave that in the comments below and we'll see you guys in the next video take care bye